Does anyone know who our board member of staff is? Concerning items not on the agenda, um, but that are germane to the district, and we have a, um, a group of, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to exercise chair prerogative and ask Dr. Parks when is the um, the limit to turn in uh, request for public comment? You know, normally, in the first um, early part of an agenda item, or in this case, the open, we will take them for a little while, and then the chair will say, okay, you know, last chance for for all of the names so that we can manage. And how many and the limits prescribed by policy per topic. And I think um, there's one in there that's not uh, related to Um That being the case, and it is two minutes speaking time? Okay, well, again, I will exercise Chair's prerogative, ask to suspend the 20 minute limit. Um, and, and, for an extension to three minutes. I understand that many of you want to speak, but we can't be here forever. So please keep your remarks concise, but I have to ask for a motion of the board to, to suspend the 20 minute speaking time um, at the limit and to extend speaking time to three minutes per speaker. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So you guys have it. First speaker we have is Roy Russell. Um, it was asked that um, we repeat the um, Ms. Machaka's last act as board president. Do you have that with you? Yes, I do. You better. Can you guys turn up the mics? At all. Can you turn it up? No one in the back can hear. We're, we're going to have to use uh, our teacher voices. Uh, unfortunately, the sound system and the acoustics in the room um, have that effect, so I'll, I'll just try myself and ask my colleagues to speak up. Um, and that would go for someone speaking as well. But, um, if, if you might, Mr. Roussel, could uh, Ms. Minchaka um, uh, have the floor for a moment? Is that, do you want to just repeat what I said? Yes. Uh, when, when we recognized Mrs. Machaka for her service as board president this past year, um, in her remarks, she made a statement that would be good for everybody who was not here in that first hour to hear. Mrs. Machaka? Okay. I'll just get to the punchline, I guess, if you were. Um, as one of my last acts as board president, I'm directing staff to place an agenda item on the agenda for a special meeting on Monday, January 9th, 2012, to allow the board to reconsider the decision which is made on December 5th regarding the principal of Gavilino High School. Since I voted with the majority on that matter, I can move to reconsider the matter. It is my intention to move to reconsider the matter. The date was selected, so our interim superintendent will be in place. The community will have returned from the holidays and will have taken a break. Okay, in other words, you don't want me to address that issue tonight? No, 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 no. You're welcome. No, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Monday night, maybe I, will, I could not be able to say honorable members of the city council. Tonight I can do that. <laughs> Mr. Eccleston, Mr. I'm on welcome to San Gabriel Unified School District. Sorry to say, Mr. Amon, that you were not giving a vote of confidence two days ago. Inspector Cure, a member of this, of this past board member, that you may not be well versed in principal Sharon Henry's history. Monday night's timing was totally wrong. You should, they should have waited. It was said that a special meetings are not uncommon and timing often has to do with board members availability. Guess what? They're all available tonight. I mean, it could easily be taken care of tonight. 
All women were available tonight. You are coming into a hostile environment. Good luck. You still have a chance to make positive history in San Diego, where your wisdom and leadership will always be remembered. As it is, you and your elected officials are on a path of self-destruction. You three can change that, and all you five, maybe. When two of you felt that Monday's decision was in the best interest of the district, that you have done some research and gave it lots of thought, and came the consent that are more than personal and than vindictive, Nevertheless, it was personal and vindictive. Go back and review this matter, regardless if it is official. I am more afraid of an army of a hundred sheep led by a lion than an army of a hundred lions led by a sheep. I am honored to say that Gabrielino High School is an army of a hundred lions led by a lion. And keep in mind, to do nothing. I hope you will do something about it. And they all doing something about it. Please bring this back and bring back Sharon Hemorrhage of the next four years. Thank you very much. President of San Diego Teachers Association. Um, this concerns the the, uh, the presentation that was made to you by the Roosevelt teachers last meeting or two meetings ago. And at that time, you had asked me if SGPA had any kind of plan for Roosevelt. We said we'd get back to you, so we're getting back to you. We did go back and we did meet with the staff there. And our executive board with, with the staff has come up with, with a plan that we have on how to uh, make things work at Roosevelt. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pass you out our plan, and you can take a look at it if you'd like to meet with me or the Roosevelt people at some point in the next few weeks and talk to us and ask questions we'd love to. Thank you. Mary Ann Voltaggio. My name is Mary Ann Voltaggio. I'm a first grade teacher at Coolidge and I've been in the district for 15 years. There's only two points I'd like to make. Number one, the decision to hire and fire administrators, teachers, whoever, I believe should be made by the superintendent. <laughs> by the board if necessary. And secondly, being as we are going to be looking for a new superintendent, I ask you please to try to choose a superintendent who's willing to do what's best for the students, the staff, the administration, and not necessarily agree with you as a board. herself said you set the tone for the district right now there's a lot of distrust and that isn't going to get any better when people feel their jobs are on the line because they disagree with a board member yeah. Yeah. We have strong superintendents when we had a lot of direction i believe there are some administrators now in the district office who are trying to bring things back and give us a focus and a direction. You need a superintendent who will work with them and support them regardless of what the board thinks. Thank you. Lee Freeman. If I might, 
future. I, I understand that some people will have things to hand out today, and it's fine. Um, in the future, if you could give it to Ms. Bracamonte, and then she could distribute it to um, the members of the board, I would appreciate that. I am Lee Freeman, community member, former board member. I want to comment on the board's action Monday night regarding GHS principal Sharon Heinrich. First and foremost, given the structure and reporting relationships of our school district, focusing your dissatisfaction on Principal Heinrich is grievously misplaced. The decision to not approve Mrs. Heinrich's contract for 2012-13, as approved by board members Menchaca, Statler, and Doan, reflects grave concerns held by them and their obvious dissatisfaction with Mrs. Heinrich's abilities and performance. Regrettably, however, you bypassed your own chain of command. As a board, you should have made your views clearly known to the superintendent, Mrs. Susan Parks, Mrs. Heinrich's superior. The superintendent is the one employee who reports to and takes direction from the board. Given your level of dissatisfaction, you should have given clear and explicit direction to the superintendent as to what you expected of Mrs. Heinrich in her role as GHS principal. <coughs> superintendent Parks, in turn, should have given Mrs. Heinrich similarly clear and explicit direction so as to comply with the board's direction, the educational master plan, and other policy and strategic objectives. Then, if Mrs. Heinrich did not comply, the superintendent should have discussed with the board appropriate next steps, reordering of priorities to reflect the board's direction, district resources of personnel, time, and money might have been necessary. In the unlikely event, and I say unlikely event, that Mrs. Heinrich then ignored the superintendent's direction, then a case for insubordination might have been in order. This does not seem to have been the case here at all. The board has seriously erred in bypassing the district's chain of command, a term that many of us are familiar with from our own experiences perhaps in the military or outside business world. I strongly urge you to reconsider Monday night's decision. Now, I have some hope and I compliment and I want to thank Mrs. Denise Menchaca for the motion she made earlier. I think that is the right thing to do, and I think that you should not ignore your chain of command. That is my process question. I'm deliberately not commenting on the allegations in that list of complaints and concerns. That's for a future board to hear, I mean a future hearing or whatever. But I think you three who voted to do that, Colleen is gone now, and you've got a different board now. You did the wrong thing in doing that. Time is up for me, but thank you for listening. <laughs>